Hey, podcast friends. This is Dr. Steve Hewlett with the podcast, Simple Healthy Choices for Weight Loss, where every week we help people who have realized that as their health has been declining over the years, the number of medications they are being prescribed is increasing. We want to help you reverse this health path so you can live the vibrant, pain-free, and hopefully medication-free life you deserve to live. If you'd like even more information on this topic, you can go to Amazon or Audible and pick up my book, Your Plate is Your Faith. And if you think my book helps you on your new health path, please tell your friends and leave a review where you purchased it. Welcome to another podcast. And in this podcast, I want to talk to you about bacteria. Now, I know people have gotten the wrong idea about bacteria. And with all the information out, and especially now that that everything's coming out with COVID-19 and everything, bacteria and viruses have gotten a very bad name. But to let you know, if it wasn't for bacteria, we would not be alive. We have got to use bacteria in order to be alive. And a lot of this bacteria, most of the bacteria that we have that is so important to us is in our gut. It's right in our intestines. And this is no little thing. Our intestines, our small intestines, so food will go from our mouth, through our throat, down into our stomach, into the small intestine, and it weaves all the way through our small intestine until it gets down to the colon, which is the large intestine. Now, just to let you know, and then it comes on out through the body, just to let you know, the size of the small intestine is no little thing. If you take the small intestine out of your body and you cut it, split it open, and you stretch it out as far as it can, our small intestines will be about the size of a tennis court. And that's because our intestines, when they're in our bodies, there's a lot of little wrinkles all through our intestines, and this increases the surface area for absorption of food because that's the main thing that our back or that our intestines do is they help with our digestion, breakdown of our food products, and then absorb them. But this process cannot be done with our out bacteria. The bacteria is extremely important in a lot of things, as you'll find out throughout this podcast. But it's been an estimated that we have over 100 trillion bacteria in our intestines. And just to kind of let you know about how much a trillion is, if you take a million seconds, that's going to equal 11.6 days. If you take a billion seconds, that's going to equal 31.7 years. And if you take one trillion seconds, that's going to be equal to 31,700 years. So there's a huge difference between a million, a billion, and a trillion. So when you talk about having 100 trillion bacteria in our gut, that is a lot of bacteria. And this bacteria is needed, like I said, it's needed for all of our nutrient absorption. So when you eat your food, the food has to go through your stomach and yeah, you're going to chew it and that's going to start the digestive process. Then it gets down to the stomach acid and that's going to continue with the digestive process. But then it gets down into our intestines and that's where we secrete some enzymes that'll break it down. And then we have a lot of bacteria that's going to start to work on this food. And this bacteria that starts working on it, that's a major part of our digestion. And this is what helps break our food down to the basic, basic building blocks. And like we said, with fats, the basic building block is fatty acids. With protein, the basic building block is amino acids. And with carbohydrates, the basic building block is glucose, which that's what most of our these podcasts are talking about is, is our way over consumption of carbohydrates and the glucose. But this is going to be another thing that we're going to be talking about is how this poor nutrition can also affect our bacteria. So this bacteria does a lot of things besides just digestion with our food. A lot of bacteria also are needed just to activate a lot of the medications that you take because some of these medications are precursors to the active means if you just had this one molecule of this medicine, it's not going to work. But once it gets into our intestines and our bacteria start working on it, it switches it into the active form and that's what gets absorbed. And some of these medications, an example is like birth control pills. There are some birth control pills that the actual pill is actually just a precursor to the active 
molecule and it takes the bacteria to activate it. And this is why a lot of times when you go to get your birth control pills, they'll tell you that you may need to, if you're on antibiotics, you may have to change and use a different form of contraception because when you take antibiotics, you kill the bacteria or some of the bacteria that's in your intestines, which means it may make it where the birth control pill isn't going to work. So another thing is like L-DOPA. Dopamine is a medication that you give to patients with Parkinson's disease. Again, L-DOPA is a pre-drug and it's the bacteria in the bowel that actually breaks that in to the active form and allows it to be absorbed and helps take care of the Parkinson's. There's also some chemotherapy also that comes in as a pre-drug and the bacteria has the work on it to make it where it's going to be activated. And this is why antibiotics can actually affect some chemo. It can also affect your Parkinson's drug and it affects your birth control. But the other thing the bacteria does is they found that the bacteria in your gut also secretes neurotransmitters. So when you hear about the neurotransmitters like serotonin, dopamine, and oxytocin, even though these are neurotransmitters throughout the body, these are actually produced in the intestines by the bacteria in your intestines. So they found that if you take a lot of antibiotics or if you eat the wrong kinds of food and you get the wrong kind of bacteria in your intestines, this can drastically affect things like your mood, how you handle stress, and a lot of other things. So the bacteria in our intestines are extremely vital to our life, you know, and to be able to live the kind of life that you want to live. Now, besides the bacteria that's in our gut, there's also a thing that was found by a man named Alessio Fasano back in 2000 at the University of Maryland School of Medicine. And he found an enzyme called, or a protein called zonulin. And zonulin is another protein that some of these bad bacteria can actually secrete. And this actually starts tearing up the intestines. So the way you want to think about it is your small intestine has a special way that it's formulated. So it keeps some things in the intestines so they never get absorbed into your body. And then other things can get absorbed. And so think of the intestines kind of like, and I'm taking this from Shalene Johnson. She's a real famous personal development coach. And I love the way she uses a lot of these analogies, but she says she used the analogy of your intestines are like like pantyhose. They're real, real tight. So when you eat some products, some food products, they're going to go into your intestines and they're going to stay in your intestines all the way out until you excrete them out through your stool. So you're not going to be getting these absorbed. But when you have some of this bad bacteria that's in your gut and this bacteria produces zonulin, zonulin will take those pantyhose and then the pantyhose have what's called tight junctions. And this is what it's called in the intestines, tight junctions. So they tiny, tiny holes. When these bacteria secrete zonulin, it breaks those tight junctions. And now it turns your intestines from being like pantyhose and it turns into be more like fishnet stockings. So things that used to be in our gut a long time ago that would just stay in the intestines and be excreted out, now, when you have this bad bacteria in your gut that produces zonulin that breaks down these tight junctions, now these products, instead of being excreted through your stool, they are actually getting absorbed into your bloodstream. So we're finding that there's a lot of products that back, you know, decades ago, these never were a problem. They never did get into our intestines but or into our bloodstream, but now they do. And one of these is an extremely common wheat protein called gluten. Gluten is just a normal wheat protein. It's been eaten forever. But now, because of the type of food that we eat and the massive amount that we eat, we're getting this bad bacteria that produces zonulin that cuts, turns our pantyhose intestines into fishnet stocking intestines. And now this wheat protein, gluten, that used to stay in our bowel is now getting absorbed. And so we're seeing a lot more gluten allergies, gluten sensitivities, and a lot of other things also. So this is another thing, and that's called leaky gut. If you ever heard the term of leaky gut or hyperpermeability of the intestines, that's what this is. That means that our intestinal lining is broken down to where a lot of things are starting to get into it that it never used to get into it. Another thing that happens is a 
thing called molecular mimicry. And this is another thing that has to do with the bacteria that's in our gut. And molecular mimicry, they think, has a lot to do with some of the autoimmune diseases that we have right now. And this uh, molecular mimicry is just that. It means that there are two molecules that mimic each other. And some of these autoimmune diseases that they think is caused by the bacteria in our gut because of this molecular mimicry are things like lupus, type 1 diabetes, and multiple sclerosis. But there's a lot of other conditions that are also caused by these bacteria or has a major player as a major player in them. And these are things like chronic fatigue syndrome, fibromyalgia, arthritis, asthma, acne, obesity, and some mental illnesses, like we like we said, because the bacteria actually help produce some of these neurotransmitters. And then obviously the like we've already mentioned, the allergies, because there's a lot of stuff that are getting into our bloodstream that never used to get into our bloodstream before. Now, one of the bacteria that I'll kind of go into a little bit more is a bacteria just to explain what molecular mimicry is. And this is a bacteria called Klebsiella pneumoniae. A Klebsiella is a normal bacteria that's in your mouth. And remember, bacteria are very important because we have them in our mouth, we have them in our intestines, we have bacteria all over our skin, and these help with our normal daily life. So not all bacteria is bad like, like we're being led to believe. But the Klebsiella pneumoniae, this is a bacteria that normally colonizes the mouth flora, but it doesn't really usually get down into your gut, except for Klebsiella lives on simple sugars. So now that we are being inundated with simple sugars and with carbohydrates and we're eating massive amounts, this Klebsiella that used to just stay up in our mouth and didn't really cause any problems, now it's getting down into our intestines. And the problem with this is because there's an enzyme that Klebsiella secretes in, this, in order to break down the sugars for it to eat. So the Klebsiella secretes this enzyme it breaks down the sugar, but our body looks at this enzyme and says, oh, that's a foreign particle. So our body produces antibodies against that enzyme. The problem with this, because of molecular mimicry, the enzyme that Klebsiella secretes to break down simple sugars is very similar to our own collagen molecules in our body. So when our body produces antibodies, against this enzyme that Klebsiella is producing to break down sugar, these antibodies actually start attacking our own body's collagen. And this becomes a huge problem because now, now this is when we start getting the autoimmune diseases. And this is why we see things like ankylosing spondylitis and Crohn's disease. So these are no little thing. And another thing that they see is with a bacteria called C. difficile or Clostridium difficile. And this is another thing. It's a bacteria that's on our gut. But when we start killing different gut bacteria and we start producing wrong bacteria, this Clostridium difficile starts getting an overgrowth. And Clostridium difficile, what this does is it's an anaerobic bacteria, which means if it is exposed to oxygen, it will die. And we have all this bacteria. We have bacteria that needs oxygen to live. We have bacteria that, that if they have oxygen, it'll kill them. We have funguses. We have all this microbiota that's in our gut, and they all keep each other in check. When things start going really awry is when we start taking things like antibiotics and things, and they kill off a certain type of bacteria. So when we kill off a lot of our aerobic bacteria, the ones that need oxygen, and we kill those off with some of our antibiotics, that leaves the antibi the bacteria that don't need oxygen, that allows them to overgrowth. And Clostridium is a perfect example of one of these type bacteria. And what Clostridium does is this actually secretes enzymes that start producing little membranes that go all the way across your colon. And this is called pseudomembranous colitis. And that's why it's called that pseudomembranous There's, is this membrane and it starts causing things like constipation, diarrhea and severe infections, actually. So one of the things that they found to take care of this bad bacteria is they found that if they did a fecal transplant where they take the stool from a healthy eater and with good bacteria and they give it like an enema into the patient's rectum that is suffering from C. difficile, this good bacteria from the donor will get into the recipient 
And that will take care of overriding the clostridium and it'll cut it back down and that will help take care of clostridium difficile. Now, these fecal transplants from a healthy donor to a sick donor can also be done through a nasal gastric tube, which is a tube that goes through the nose, down through the stomach, through the pylorus and into the small intestine. And they'll inject some of this healthy stool that way also. Now, what's really Besides the fact that this fecal transplant can actually take care of the Crohn's disease or the C. difficile, the other thing that they found that was very interesting is when they injected this new stool, this healthy stool from a healthy donor into the sick recipient, all of a sudden the sick recipient of the stool started having food cravings for the same types of food that the healthy donor would eat. And this opened up a whole new thing that found out that actually our bacteria in our gut can actually make us have cravings for the same type of food that they want. So they found that healthy people have healthy bacteria that help us live in our vital life. But when you start eating all this horrible man-made food, this processed food, the overwhelming carbohydrates that get in, all these types of things change the type of bacteria that we have from the good bacteria to the bad bacteria. And now the bad bacteria actually have you craving the same types of horrible food that you were eating in order to get the bad bacteria in the first place. So one of the easiest things that you can do to get the good bacteria is change the way you eat and start eating healthy food. Quit eating man-made processed food. Eat God-made food with real meat and real fruit and real vegetables and stay away from these processed carbohydrates because these are the ones that are going to be causing all this bad bacteria to start growing in your intestines. And the other thing that changes this microbiota are all the different things like the way overuse of antibiotics. And it's been known for a long time. The antibiotics, they'll take care of a little bitty thing, but then they can also start causing a lot of havoc in your intestines as well as, you know, with all the other bacteria. So we have way overuse of antibiotics. We're also getting a lot of resistant bacteria built up because the more you expose a bacteria to something, the more it becomes resistant to it. The other thing is the regular use of antacids. People eat antacids all the time. A lot of times they eat them because of stress, the ulcer that they produce because of stress, where they need, instead of, taking an antacid to take care of stress, they need to learn other techniques to take care of stress and leave the pH of the stomach alone. And there are a lot of different things out there on how to do stress. And there's a lot of breathing techniques that will also help you with stress. As if you heard my interview with Lindsay Young, that was, she went through a whole process of how you can eliminate stress. Um, the other thing is all the antibiotic soaps and all the hand sanitizers. Right now, because of COVID, everybody thinks that bacteria is horrible. They got to wash their hands constantly. They need to protect themselves from all bacteria. And this is not true. You have to expose yourself bacteria because this is the way that your body can regulate what's the good bacteria, what's the bad bacteria. So walking around bare feet is great. You don't have to wash your hands constantly unless you're actually around someone who is extremely unhealthy. They're either sick or they've been eating improperly for a long time. And so their body isn't able to take care of bacteria. But the overuse of antacids, antibiotics, and hand sanitizers and antibiotic soaps is really detrimental to our bodies. We don't need to do these all the time. There's even things that can affect your gut bacteria from the time you're born. And the different things of this are like when you're when the baby's in utero inside the mother, there's no bacteria in its intestines. When it very first starts colonizing its intestine is as it passes down through the vaginal canal. That way, the bacteria that's in the vaginal canal will get into the eyes, nose, mouth of the baby, and then that's going to be swallowed, and that's when you're first going to start giving this bacteria into your, into your baby. So the healthier the mother is with healthy bacteria, the better bacteria that you're going to be exposing your baby to, which is very good. But the other thing is breast milk. So breast milk is very, very good. It is vital that, that babies get breast milk when they are born. And breast milk, it's not just milk. You're not just giving your baby carbohydrates and protein and fat. You're giving it healthy bacteria. You're also giving it antibodies. 
Okay, these antibodies that the mother has, that's going to be in the baby's milk. And so that's going to help us with its health also. And when the proteins and the carbohydrates and fat from the breast milk get into the baby, it's already in a digestible form because it's already gone through the mother's digestive tract, into the bloodstream, into the milk, and now it's getting into the baby. So it's much easier on the baby. But this isn't what people do anymore. Now we have all these baby people who are scheduling these C-sections, even when they don't need one, they just want to do it because it's handy to have it at a certain time. So if you have a C-section, these babies are not going to be exposed to the bacteria that go down the vaginal canal. Then after they have a C-section, they start them on formula, on man-made, chemical-laden, ton of sugar in these baby formulas. And so they're not getting the antibodies. They're not getting the healthy bacteria. And a lot of times these are not going to be easily digestible. And that's why if you're going to have intestinal issues, if a baby's going to have that, they have to give them a special man-made formula that's already in a digestible form, which is a lot more expensive to have, where if you just gave breast milk, you'd already have all your nutrients in a digestible form. So this is why a lot of people now are realizing this, especially after we figured out how important our gut bacteria is. And people are finally going back and starting to make their own baby formula again. They're making their own baby food with fresh vegetables, fresh fruits, and fresh meats and just pureeing them. And that's so important. So really, babies should be on breast milk just as long as they possibly can be. And then when they start, they need to be on real food that just gets pureed. And remember, when you're doing this, stick with the meat and the vegetables first. Make sure that your baby is very, very nourished on these things before you introduce the sweet things like the fruits and everything. Because once your child gets the taste of sweet, that's all they want. And the whole purpose of all of these podcasts that I'm doing is to make sure that people try to change their thoughts about something doesn't taste good unless it's sweet. They need to realize that the taste of sweet is actually extremely detrimental to your health. And this is the cause of our obesity crisis, type 2 diabetes crisis, metabolic syndrome crisis. So we need to get away from the taste of sweet. And the best way is just never expose your child to the taste of sweet in the first place. And this is so important. And we did this in our house as well. It's really not that hard. When your child is growing up, you can't control what happens when your child goes to somebody else's house, but you have 100% control of what happens in your own house. And our children, we always try to give them the, the healthy food as they were growing up. And then I remember when my child, one time he's probably in probably fourth grade, third, fourth grade, he went over to a friend's house and he came back to us and he's like, oh my gosh, I was over at my friend's house and they had this thing. I don't know if you've ever heard of it, but it's called pop tarts and these things were wonderful and my wife and i just looked at each other like uh oh here it goes <laughs> now they're going to be getting exposed to all this other stuff at other people's homes but if you teach them how to eat healthy now they may go through a phase in their childhood but just like now both our boys they eat very healthy they'll make their food they enjoy making their food and they'll send pictures of the food they're making so you can make this fun make it healthy and Remember that bacteria, all bacteria is not good. And just because you're using hand sanitizers and soap and antibiotics, you could actually be causing bad bacteria in your gut to be forming. You're going to kill the good bacteria. You're going to let the bad bacteria run. And then when you eat things like carbohydrates that cause other bacteria in your group, in your intestines to start secreting enzymes like the zonulin, this can lead to a lot of major problems. So I just want to let you know that that's, Important. Remember, when you think of bacteria, don't think this is something horrible. If we didn't have bacteria, we would not be able to live. And the healthier you eat, the healthier bacteria are, the more you're going to be craving the healthy foods and actually even the better mood you may have also because of the serotonin, dopamine and oxytocin that's being produced by these good bacteria. So that's all I have for now. And I just want to thank you so much for listening and have a great week. And remember, Make simple, healthy choices to live a quality life. If you enjoyed this podcast, please hit the subscribe button below and be sure to tell someone else who may want to change their health path as well. And don't forget, you can also purchase my book, Your Plate is Your Fate, on Amazon or Audible. And if you do, please leave a review 